up on to the contrary. First, this week's viral video taken during a Baltimore riot sparks a national debate about black parenting. Then, a second woman running for U.S. president? Behind the headlines, actress Salma Hayek on her crusade for women's and girls' rights and against unequal pay in Hollywood. Do you get paid equally? Nobody gets paid equally. Bay. Welcome to To the Contrary, a discussion of news and social trends from diverse perspectives. Up first, six police officers in Baltimore charged in the death of Freddie Gray. The Gray case had sparked protest and violence in Baltimore and a parenting debate. Is it ever okay to hit your child? The Baltimore mom being heralded for what some call knocking sense into her son and pushing him away from the rioters has sparked a parenting debate. That, after this video went viral. While some question her actions, most are calling Toya Graham mom of the year. Graham says she was just trying to keep her son safe. Author and commentator on parental issues, Ilonda Galt says she sees both sides. People are very much divided on it. I know that a lot of us grew up that way in black homes and white homes, you know, I mean, when you think about generations ago, and we are more enlightened. I do not believe in corporal punishment. And I wasn't saying, oh, yes, beat them, smack them, get them. I was saying yes to the fact that I felt that she was acting on her own confidence and intuition as a mom. Galt says cultural differences and prior experiences create different parenting styles in many black and white families. What I responded to and what lots of black people responded to was her notion of going to get her child by whatever means necessary. And in my book, I talk about the fact that dating back to slavery, this is something that mothers and fathers had to do to protect their children. So Congresswoman Norton, are there differences but between the way white parents and black parents or other races parent? Sometimes, Bonnie, but these are cultural, not racial differences that reflect uh, differences in life experience of groups throughout our country and, frankly, throughout the world. There are differences, and sometimes they're huge. I'll agree with the Congresswoman, but I think it's totally okay because at the end of the day, every parent wants their kid to be happy, healthy, and a successful human being. And I think there are going to be inherent differences. I definitely think that there are differences, particularly with our history in this country. Black parents understand that our children are especially at risk of being exposed to violence, and we will do what's necessary to keep, try to keep them safe. Can I just pivot back to just pointing at the fact, or the larger issue here, which, which is that both the son and the mom were out protesting against what's wrong with their, with, with the issues that they're dealing with, which is a broken criminal justice system. And it's unfair for both of them to be facing such challenges and, and really the spotlight being on parenting issues when at the end of the day we've got lost lives and we've got too many young people, especially p young people of color, who are getting into a system that is cutting their dreams and cutting their opportunities in the long term. All right, but wait a second, just one quick I think, correction, the mom was not protesting. She was looking for her son who was protesting. I believe she was out with a number of other moms who were uh, kind of uh, understanding what was going on and she saw her son and, and their eyes connected. So, I mean, they were, she was both out and he was out. And they were, I think, expressing, again, their dis this dissatisfaction and frustration with what their city is dealing with and some serious issues that we can't all ignore. Okay, but when, first of all, let's talk about the law, okay? It's against the law, I think, in most states, to hit your child, to strike your child, use violence against your child. Does that bother anybody? To me, no. He's well, under 18. <laughs> I think it's her prerogative. I mean, she wasn't hitting an adult child. This is her child. She was, she was doing it out of love. Of course, it was in a public space, but she said she wasn't thinking about cameras. She wasn't thinking about all that. She was caught up in the moment. Well, I will say that this, this particular clip did bother me. I mean, that was not like the typical swat on the back that you give a two-year-old or something. Uh, that was a, a huge hit in the face. Uh, it did bother me for that reason, but it also bothered me because I believe, as you mentioned, it really changed the focus and the narrative away from what really needs to be the focus. To me, the biggest crime isn't perhaps being involved in a 
very broad, you know, rowdy demonstration. The biggest crime is the fact that you had this an individual who had their spine broken. That really was the focus. That needs to be the focus. And unfortunately, this particular incident really turned the tables in terms of the media attention. But, uh, but, 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 frankly, there, there have been. Uh, there, there, there have been, particularly from conservative commentators, notions about why don't you do something about your children in the first place, mm -hmm. and then they wouldn't be out here. So I think the reason you see divided opi atten uh, uh, opinion is that people are trying to come to grips with what's happening here. By the way, I don't think she snapped him in the face. I think she looked for his head <laughs> as, as best she could. Uh, but problem she faced evidently didn't come true. The problem you face when you not only hit a child, but do so in public, especially a teenager, is that you embarrass him and you estrange him and he really is out of your control. But the next day on television, he says, I know my mom cares about me. I know I was doing wrong. And he smiles. He is the youngest child. Um, he is the only boy. He's been pampered. He knows she loves him. And she is so afraid of that ghetto where she lives and seeing every boy almost uh, in, 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 in that age somehow caught up. And here was her own son caught up. She said it right. I lost it. She didn't try to say, yeah, and the next time I see you, it's going to be worse. So th that seemed to me to be a good response from her, knowing that it was of the moment and that she shouldn't have done it. I just wonder, you know, Adrian Peterson, different circumstances, much younger child using a, a whip or a stick, and he gets criticized. Uh, if, if this had been the child's father hitting him like that, would, it have, would he have been criticized for it? I mean, that's a really good question. Uh, uh, you know, what, what, the, what, at the end of the day, we're talking about parental choice and what you choose to do as long as it's not within a, a means of danger and harming uh, the, the, the welfare of your child, then I think it's fair for uh, parents to make their own choices. Exactly. And are the differences in parenting really racial? Because, of course, Yvonne Galt, uh, Yolanda, rather, Galt, talked about, we didn't use the clip, but she talked about going to visit her grandparents in the South in the 70s. And she thought it was going to be a real fun occasion. And her grandparents were like shushing her and her siblings and more afraid of them doing something bad in front of white people and getting hurt, possibly, by white people uh, who saw them as uppity yeah, or, I, or something like I that. I think that's very important, what, what, what you try to distinguish. And I think it would be, be very wrong to see that this is racial. She, she's talking about going to the South to an older generation. And it's interesting. Uh, the closer you were to the generation of discrimination and slavery, the more you, you, you uh, chastened your children from doing anything that might get the white man coming at you and at the family, because many of families have been, had to leave the South for, for that reason. And black families have been criticized for being so hard on black men that they don't have the gumption sometime. Well, you see, that's disappeared. And, and now we see the streets or who are educating these black boys. And you have this single mother having to come to grips with, it, with that. A and she doesn't quite know how to handle it, except she does, as she admitted when she said, essentially, I lost it. But what I find very problematic about this whole scenario is that a number of people who really don't really care have never said anything about the police brutality that's at the spawn of this are all of a sudden lifting her up as mom of the year. It's as if they enjoy seeing a black child get hit. So I'm just wondering about the motivations of some of these people who are, in fact, exalting her. Are they exalting her because they truly believe that she cared about her child? Or are they in some way getting some sort of, you know, sorry sort of happiness out of seeing the abuse of a black child who, on who live you, TV. But who are you saying this about? Are they, what what race are these people? Who, are they conservatives, well, I liberals? find that a lot of conservatives in, uh, have really been sort of lifting up this particular woman, and at the same time, they will make every excuse in the book around dead black bodies at the hands of the police. You can't have it both ways. Either you're for violence or you're against it. Are you only for, you know, violence when, it, when it's perpetrated against this black child in which you can see it and it seems to be accepted? Or are you, are you saying that it's okay when it's policemen who end up killing people and nothing happens? All right, good question. Let us know what you think. Please follow me on Twitter at Bonnie Urbay or at to the contrary. From mother of the year to a new presidential female contender. Hillary Clinton is drawing the most attention, but she's not the only woman running for president. 
Republican Carly Fiorina is reportedly set to announce she's running for president. Her supporters say the campaign is already picking up steam. The former Hewlett Packard CEO was a success in Iowa, drawing crowds at local GOP events. Many Republicans praise Fiorina's business background and outsider status as she's never held political office. But Fiorina is still polling at less than 5 percent. Media commentators have criticized her record at HP, charging she mismanaged the company. Others say her failed 2010 Senate run makes it doubtful she can lead a successful campaign. So does she offer women uh, a good alternative to Hillary Clinton? And most women, as we know, going into at this point in the race, seem to be supporting Hillary. I think she's giving Republican women some food for thought. She's she's making them reconsider, especially independent women even. I think she has a profile that's appealing, but I, when we get digging beneath the surface, we're going to see some real problems. Her HP record, her not being able to beat Barbara Boxer in 2010, which was a Republican year. These are some real problems. And also, she's very, very set on her abortion stance. She's super pro-life. And for millennials and young Republicans, those who are more moderate, that's going to be a real issue. Yeah, okay, and you, you go, go ahead. <laughs> when you consider that the cast of thousands of white men <laughs> She is, if anything, a refreshing addition to the Republican lineup. I think she should be welcomed. I think those of us who are feminists who are for women getting into politics ought to welcome her. I agree with you. Uh, she got, quote, baggage of her own. Everyone's talking about uh, Hillary's baggage. Uh, but I love her ambition. Uh, she was deeply involved in the last Republican campaign, therefore she's not an unknown. She has the gumption to, to get in, and the gumption means that she knows she is going to be looked at inside out, and she's not going to be seen as just another woman, and isn't it nice to have you in the race? Well, you know, a lot of <laughs> progressives are saying that the only time women are chosen to run companies is when they're about to c fail. <laughs> yeah. And so she's being blamed. She and every female CEO who takes over a company in deep trouble, because those are the only positions offered to women at this point for the most part, not completely, but largely. So is she being blamed unfairly for HP's problems? I personally think she is. I, I think she was edged out by some zealous board of director members, and uh, there was a showdown in the boardroom that we, the public will not know about. I think she was edged out of that job. She had a spectacular career, which ended with an inglorious ending at HP. So um, it was unfair. I, I do agree. But she's going to have to really play that nicely to the American public that, look, this is what happened. This is the reality of it. This is who I am. I'm owning up to this, but this is the truth. Do we think she'll siphon any Democratic female votes away from Hillary? No, but she may have an effect on, on some independents, and Republican women must be so glad to see somebody in there who's not an arch conservative and whose every other word is anti-woman. Uh, uh, but I don't think she can penetrate, really, uh, be because, uh, and, and I think you're right to, to cite the California race. Don't think that California is just a blue state and will always elect a blue. This, this, there's a lot of Republicans who were very glad to see her in the race. She couldn't make it against the most liberal Democrat, Barbara Boxer, uh, in, in the Senate. Now, of course, uh, Hillary comes not unblemished. Uh, and she will stand out in that pack, believe me, because it'll be hard to even see the differences. The differences among the other eeny, meeny, miny, mo. And just because she's a woman and because she's not hard right, she will stand out. And yes, independent women will take note. But I think also she may stand out because of her Christian values. She's not afraid to talk about her faith and how it, it helped her through losing breast, losing a child and also breast cancer. I mean, I think both of you are very right about young uh, millennial voters as well. There are a lot of issues that uh, hard right, uh, the hard right are, are looking after. Um, it's a done deal for us when it comes to abortion rights or when it comes to uh, gay marriage. And so if she can position herself as someone who can represent that, that viewpoint, then maybe she can make some headway with young voters. But that's true of all of the presidential candidates on the right. I think it's really quite shrewd, frankly, of the Republican Party to make sure that there is a woman in the race because it gives them away. What makes you think the, that this was the party's decision as opposed to her own personal Well, you know, decision. it may have been her own personal decision, but I'm sure she probably talked to some people beforehand, and I'm sure she probably got a little bit of a push. And I think it's very shrewd because it makes it it's very easy, it's easier, let me put it like this, to attack a woman when that attack is coming from another woman. 
than it would be uh, if Hillary Clinton was attacked by just a panel full of men. Uh, and so I think that it's going to create a, for a very interesting primary season, and I think that she'll begin, even in the primaries, even though she's running for her own you know, nomination, she'll begin now lobbying attacks against Hillary in a way to solving her up. Even if she doesn't get the nomination, it's going to create headway for whoever the Republican but nomination is. But all said and done, uh, if the major issue in this race is what I think it will be, income inequality, all of them have an uphill climb to make, and she has just as much of, of such a climb as any of the men. Anybody so. think she has a really good shot at getting the nomination? Not really. Speak <laughs> up or forever hold you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, we got our answers. <laughs> Behind the headlines, Selma Hayek Pinot is an actress, producer, and director. She's also an activist dedicated to advancing the rights of women and girls around the world. This week, Hayek Pinot talked to me about her passion for making a difference. Your philanthropy has been geared toward women and girls. Tell me about that. Everybody picks a, what's most important to them. Why was helping women and girls most important to you? Because if you pick this subject, you helped every subject. You somehow are involved in all the problems in the world. In all the conflicts, no matter what they are, women are the most affected. And plus, we have to deal with many others that you don't need a conflict to deal with, like uh, domestic violence. Like when I got to France, I, everywhere I go, I always find my cause and I always work with the different communities. But France w was like such a great place that it was hard to find like a cause. But you know, at the end of the day, no matter where you go, there's always domestic violence. There is, this is, there is no place in the world, no matter how evolved the country is, there's always domestic violence, so... Um, how have you changed that? Well, we have worked in, 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 Fra in France with many organizations that target specifically domestic violence, but also through the Caring Foundation, where I am part of the board and is the company of my husband. Um, this is the first uh, private initiative company that has uh, train personnel to uh, around 200 in France, Italy, and the UK for detecting cases of domestic violence within the company because many of the times the women victim of domestic violence, they don't go to work because they can't. They are bruised or there's some problems and they lose their job uh, because they cannot say it's because of this. And in this company, uh, the personnel is trained to detect it early and to be able in absolute confidentiality not only uh, not fire them but support them, help them and find ways to get them out of it. Hayek Pinot co-founded Chime for Change with Beyonce. Its goal is to promote international women's empowerment. Tell me about uh, Chime for Change. We are working with more than 120 different NGOs. And what's great about it is that everybody is welcome. But the beauty of it is what we are doing is only giving the power to the people. There are so many people who want to help and do something, and they don't know how. And I was one of them once. And I had to, like, struggle and find the things on my own. And now through Time for Change, through social media, uh, we can inform you of all the different challenges that women are confronting around the world, uh, where we organize them in, in three different uh, subjects so that it's easier to detect health, education, and justice. And we tell you who is doing what in that place, how can you contact them, and how can you help. Hayek Pinot was born in Mexico to a Spanish mother and Lebanese father. This week, she came to Washington, D.C. to receive a Khalil Gibran Spirit of Humanity Award from the Arab American Institute. It's her pride in her heritage. It's the fact that she's embodied that pride in her heritage now in a film that will teach a generation uh, about Khalil Gibran, uh, who's so important to all of us. Um, it's also about the work she does with women and girls. Um, she's an activist who has done some really extraordinary things in several, several countries. And, we're proud of that, and it's a, it's a combined package that, that for us uh, is worthy of, of recognition. Tonight, it's a magical night. What does it mean to you? It means a lot to me. It comes um, 
from the Arab community in the United States. Uh, it comes at a very special time for me. I had tried to go to Lebanon with my family four times in the past and always something happened, so there was sort of like a curse and I couldn't make it. And finally I make it to Lebanon and it was the most extraordinary trip. I was very proud to be able that for the first time that I went to Lebanon, I didn't go empty handed, but I was able to bring the Khalil, the, the movie about Khalil Gibran's The Prophet based on, on the book. Hayek Pinot debuted her animated film at a theater in Beirut and visited the Khalil Gibran Museum. While in Lebanon, she also visited with Syrian refugees. Tell me what you saw in the refugee camps. I saw a lot of cases of really, really moving cases where I see the help being at work. However, I also encountered that the challenges are way bigger than one could possibly imagine. And it's in the courage of these children and of these families to not just to survive, but to survive with dignity. You are known mainly as a Latina, um, born in Mexico, movie and soap opera star in Mexico, and then movie star here. Um, is this sort of a, a way to show the world that you're, you also have? No, no, the reason that I was born, uh, that I was uh, known as a Latina is because to the Americans, because of my accent, they could see nothing but a Mexican. <laughs> and uh, they don't see beyond that. So because I was known through the movies and I was typecast as a Latina, uh, probably I was not known, but uh, I don't even know how they never noticed that. My name was Salma Hayek, it's not, it's not Maria Gonzalez. <laughs> so it's, it's very clear that I've always been very proud and I've always talked about it. Um, but I, I am happy that I'm not just an actress and I'm also a producer, I'm also an activist. And even though uh, in the eyes of Hollywood or of the you know, entertainment industry, I was a Mexican, so that's what the parts that I got. Through some of the other work that I do, I was able to embrace in my work also my love for this part of my heritage. As an advocate for women's rights, Hayek Pino stands with fellow actor Patricia Arquette. At the Academy Awards, Arquette called for pay equity for all women in the United States. Do you get paid? equally, for example. She was saying that, that in Hollywood, women and men aren't paid. No, nobody gets paid equally. No, of course not. We don't get paid equally, but we also don't get the opportunities equally. And also we don't get to tell our stories equally and we don't get to entertain. I mean, for example, for women of our generation, there is really not a lot of uh, uh, movies uh, out there, unless they're very small movies that are dramas, nobody puts the money for like big entertainment for women of our generation. The younger ones is changing. One last question, You're, you said you had to marry a, a, when you were single and then after you married you had to find a man with bigger b than you have um, and I think women love you for that. <laughs> what is it how do you raise your daughter? To they are that? rare, huh? but I found one. Right. But how do you raise your daughter to be that self-confident that you could say that? I don't think I have to do anything specific because she leaves it at home. What, what advice? Trust me, she, she, she has it in her. <laughs> but what, what advice to other women who want to raise their daughters to be strong? Leave the example. You must be strong on, on your own right so that when you tell your, your, your daughter, she respects you. I love Avis Jones the Weaver that she was so strong on unequal pay in Hollywood. What do you think, by, by coming out like this, by saying this, how does she help equalize the pay or is there nothing that's until women start running all the major studios? Right, I don't see how any one person can change an institution that has historically and continues to be discriminatory, but I am happy to see that she's using her celebrity status to really move forward on women's rights issues around the world. Well, that's what, what impresses me. Kudos to Selma and to Beyonce, also involved, for using their celebrity uh, as too few women and too few, I, I may say so, blacks do. To, to, to champion 
others like them around the world. Why do you say too few women and too few black? Because how many, do, how many women do you know who are doing what Selma is doing for people, women around the world or even in our country? Hard to name them. And this brings us back, full circle back to what we were talking about earlier, where this is a global fight. I love that she was born in Mexico, gained uh, acclaim here in the United States, and built a career, and she's fighting for women across the board. That's an opportunity that we all have to do, especially those of us who aren't born in this country. Absolutely. I'm for women of color, she's a fantastic example. She talks about being an example, being strong, and that's just, it's great. I mean, Beyonce last year, I'll never forget, her partner in this Time for Change at the VMAs in 2014 had that big feminist, you know, slogan on the back of her performance. Fantastic. That's it for this edition of To the Contrary. Please follow me on Twitter. Visit our website, pbs.org slash to the contrary, and whether you agree or think, to the contrary. See you next week.